In terms of area in the brain's neocortex, perception represents about half of the general intelligence problem, the other half being planning and acting on what you perceive. This means the capabilities I'm describing in this video represent a significant portion of the AGI development process. In the last video, I introduced a system for perception in the brain simulator, and in this video I'll explain how the system works in broad terms to form a perception pipeline. In future videos, I'll describe individual steps in greater detail. Leave a comment below to let me know which ones you'd like to see first. Steps in the perception process are implemented as individual brain simulator modules. Some of these represent classic computer vision algorithms while others break new ground. Although I'll be describing the pipeline for visual perception, a similar pipeline exists for hearing and other pipelines may exist for other senses as well. The steps I'll describe are vision input, boundaries and corner detection, finding segments, merging segments into defined areas. Now before continuing, these steps correspond to classic computer vision algorithms. And after the first few, though, rather than being neuron-based, the remaining steps rely on the universal knowledge store, which is a graph data structure of nodes connected by edges. Although often considered symbolic AI, graphs are not really so different from neurons connected by synapses. Then the system detects shapes in the areas. These are abstract so that they can be recognized in any size, position, or orientation. System recognizes colors. It compares the visual field and builds a library of known objects. These are combinations of shapes and other properties. The system then detects motion and determines if it is object motion or changes in point of view. And it adds new objects to build an internal mental model of its surroundings. The attention module decides which things to pay attention to. More important than an object's properties is their relationships to other objects. You know where things are in relationship to other things, not in terms of any absolute coordinates. Finally, associations are built from multiple attention streams, like associating words with properties and relationships. Now I'll go into a little more detail on each step individually. Vision Input. This module reads data from example image files and converts these into the firing rates of neurons. It can optionally get information tags describing the image and put these into a hearing pipeline for later use. Boundaries and Corners. This step finds boundaries which are points in the image where the adjacent color pixels are abruptly different. It also finds points of interest where the boundaries themselves change abruptly. These are usually corners and are shown as red neurons. Segments. Given this set of boundary and corner points from the previous step, this step finds segments in the set of boundary points. This step also marks the transition from working with individual neurons to using the graph structure of the Universal Knowledge Store. All the subsequent steps work exclusively with the UKS. In this view, into the UKS you can see the segment nodes changing as new objects are seen. Areas. In this view of the UKS, you can see areas being added as they are detected in the visual field. To give you an idea of the process in this step, here is the module code which gets the segments from the UKS, finds corners, 
merges the segments into areas and estimates a size, center, and color for each before writing the areas to the UKS. Shapes. Areas in the previous step are in the coordinate system of the visual input. This means that all visual areas will change if you get closer to an object or just move your eyes. Within the UKS, shapes consist of corners with angle properties and the ratios of lengths between them. That way, a shape can be recognized regardless of its size, position, or rotation. This step scores each area against its library of known shapes, and if there is no good match, a new shape is added to the library. This step also shows another way the UKS relates to neurons. You can see that when a shape is recognized, the node representing that abstract shape fires. The system has no idea what the shapes actually are, so it gives them arbitrary labels. Color. This step is similar to the previous, but instead of working with boundary segments, it works with area color and could be expanded to include gradients and visual textures. Detected colors are scored against stored colors, and if no close match is found, a new color is added, again with an arbitrary label. When we get to association, we'll see that incoming words can be associated with these color nodes. Colors are stored in the UKS in terms of their hue, saturation, and luminance. This is more convenient for color recognition because, for example, all reddish colors have a similar hue, while comparisons in the more common RGB format are a little more complex. Known objects. This step matches the area properties against a library of known objects, where areas are simply areas of color in the visual field and shapes are abstract sets of corners. A known object represents a physical object, which is a combination of properties. Here you can also see that saved shapes from the previous step have a preferred angle. This is necessary because although you want to be able to recognize objects in any orientation, you also need to be able to resolve ambiguities with objects which may differ only in their orientation. Motion. This step introduces the internal mental model. It compares the known object it has recognized with the current content of the metal model and determines if any objects have moved, also appeared or disappeared. If all objects are moving, this step can assume that the objects are static, but the visual point of view has changed. For example, if all object positions are moving with motions radiating from a single point, the system assumes that the point of view is moving toward that point and the objects are actually static. Finally, this step updates the internal mental model with the new objects and new object locations. Attention. If the system sees a visual object and hears a single word, it is possible that they are related. This introduces the idea of an attention stream which focuses on a single object of attention at a time. You can have multiple attention streams, for example, vision and hearing, and you might even have more than one visual attention stream, but each stream considers or fires only one thing at a time. If there is an object which is in motion or has just appeared, the system makes it the object of attention. Otherwise, attention moves randomly among objects in the mental model. Relationships. This step compares the current object of attention with the previous object of attention and builds relationship links for all the comparable properties. Here you can see how the UKS represents the knowledge that area 0 is to the left and below of area 1 while they are the same color and the same size. 
Relationships are likely the most important data mechanism in general intelligence. Your brain doesn't know how big anything is in absolute terms. It only knows that it is bigger, smaller, or about the same as some other things. For example, you may know that your palm is about 10 centimeters across. Well, you don't know this in absolute terms, you simply know that it is about the same size as a measuring stick of the same type. At this stage, the system has no way of knowing which relationships might be important, so it has no alternative but to build the links for all possible relationships, adjust their weights on significant occurrences, and eventually prune away the ones which aren't useful. Each relationship is a special graph edge because it not only connects two nodes, but also has a relationship type, which is a third node. The system maintains a list of all possible relationship types so it can answer questions like, what is the same or bigger or smaller than this object? This relationship type list is maintained just like the lists of shapes and colors in that if a new relationship is encountered, it's added to the list. Relationships are intrinsically transitive, so you know that if the yellow triangle is to the right of the blue rectangle and the red square is to the right of the yellow triangle, then you immediately know that the red square is to the right of the blue rectangle. This is important because the system doesn't need to create relationships between all pairs of objects. By comparing only nearby objects, the system can use the transitive properties to know many more relationships than those explicitly added to the UKS. Associations. This last step in this demonstration merges visual and verbal attention streams so that words can be associated with properties and relationships. When an object gets attention, its UKS node fires along with its related property and relationship nodes. Likewise, when a word is heard, it gets attention and its associated node fires. This step simply builds or strengthens links between nodes which fire simultaneously and weakens those which don't. This is the essential definition of neuronal heavy in learning, even though it's being performed on nodes and edges in a graph. After only a few presentations, the links will settle so that red must apply to the color while square must apply to the shape. There is an intrinsic ambiguity in the input data, but over time the hits and misses will strengthen the correct relationships and cancel out the incorrect ones. This wraps up the overview of the perception pipeline. It will make more sense if you download the brain simulator and try out the perception network for yourself. In future videos, I'll examine some steps in greater detail and share future development plans for improving each step. Please leave a comment about which areas are the most interesting to you. Also, to help advance the development project, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching.